is the Super Bowl of the motion picture business right here. Maybe the pirate's life isn't for me. The third entry in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise upped the action and visuals to deliver a thrilling experience. Let's see what it was like making this swashbuckling adventure. The gigantic ending battle between the Black Pearl and Dutchman is one of the biggest set pieces in movie history. They filmed the sequence in a military hangar, where they constructed a massive set. It required 920 feet of blue screen, which is one of the biggest in film history, electrical cables that stretched over 8 stories tall, massive ships on gimbal systems to rotate them, and a water system to simulate rain. The pure mass of this set is hard to comprehend, and all of this was designed and built in just three months. The visual effects side of this battle was a massive undertaking of its own, as the sequence had over 320 VFX shots, which made up one third of all visual effects shots for the movie. It required a massive amount of computing time. I mean, it was just mind blowing. The entirety of the climactic fight between the Black Pearl and Dutchman takes place in the rain, which meant the actors were constantly getting soaked. The set had a massive rain system that dumped water at 50,000 gallons a minute. Captain Barbosa actor Jeffrey Rush said when his costume got wet, he weighed 45 pounds more. The last 10 weeks shooting of the movie, they had nothing left to shoot that wasn't in torrential rain for 10 weeks. Orlando Bloom stated that there were some days of shooting where they would be wet the entire day. It doesn't look too comfortable behind the scenes, but it looks fantastic on screen. How wet could a man be? Speaking of being soaked, apparently that's just par for the course when you work on a movie about sailing the high seas. For the sequence when the Black Pearl is flipped over, the actors actually filmed that scene underwater. They would all synchronize a breath hold, and then go under and hold onto a rail for as long as they could until they needed air. They even filmed Rigetti and Pintel tied to the mast underwater, which was a little nerve-wracking for the actors. Not to worry though, they had tons of water safety experts on set, just in case of an emergency. It doesn't really feel like a good idea to tie people up to a mast underwater. The dramatic and beautiful scene where the Endeavor ship gets torn to shreds with Beckett still on it is more practical than you probably think. All the actors, including Beckett, were filmed separately from the exploding ship. They had a crew member counting on set so all the actors could hit their marks at the proper time. Nine. They then shot the same sequence, but this time with no actors. They used pyrotechnics and shot debris out of cannons to simulate the ship blowing apart. Motion controlled cameras were used for both takes, so the shots could then be easily composited together for a seamless sequence of beautiful destruction. Looky here, boy! A lost bug! If you thought Davy Jones sword fighting with Jack Sparrow on a high beam up in the air was fake, you'd be half right. The fight was shot practically, with Johnny Depp and a Davy Jones stunt double performing the fight on a small piece of the set. The long swooping shot following this fight starts off 100% CGI, including Johnny Depp, then transitions into the real Johnny Depp and stunt double performance. It's a perfect example of practical elements and CG working together. Step lively! Have a will! How do you create a scene with multiple Jack Sparrows? You have Johnny Depp do the same scene over and over and over as different versions of himself. Depp had to rehearse the scene character by character, applying small nuances to each version. It was a great challenge, you know. He and director Gore Verbinski came up with the individual quirks of each Jack variation. They used a motion-controlled camera for each take, repeating the sequence for as many Jacks were in the shot. They then overlaid the takes in camera to give Depp and the crew an idea of what it would look like. When you see it's working, that it juices you up, you know. In another multi-Jack sequence, we see mini Jack Sparrows on Johnny Depp's shoulders, interacting with his hair. For this, they built giant dreadlocks that Johnny Depp did the scene with. They had one dread that was suspended in the air, with Depp hanging onto it. We love that they decided to do this practically, as the visual of Johnny Depp standing in giant dreads is worth it alone. I wash my hands of this weirdness. How do they make the ships in the movie look so real? 
Simple, they build them for real. Well, simpler said than done. Davy Jones's ship, the Dutchman, was completely built from scratch and was a real sailboat with no motors. It was inspired by late 17th century design and fittingly, based on a Dutch flute design. The design team used a urethane casting, a rubber-like substance, to give the wood an aged look. On top of this, all the sculptures on the ship were created by hand by their team of artists. There's so many man hours involved in this. A combination of live action ships, CGI, and miniatures were used to bring all the ships you see on screen to life. The scene where the Black Pearl and Dutchman surround the Endeavor is a perfect example of this technique. The Black Pearl was a real full-size ship with some digital enhancements. Two regular boats filled in for the other ships, and the wide shot of the Endeavor exploding was a miniature being blown up. ILM VFX supervisor John Knoll stated the importance of capturing a sequence in camera first. My goal is to always start from some live action, so we've got some grounding in reality that we can build from. The vast nothingness of Davy Jones's locker is actually a real life location. They shot the scene at the Bonneville Salt Flats of Utah. The director loved the look of it and the vastness of the landscape. It rained a couple days before shooting, which almost ruined everything, but luckily it dried up enough to film. The full size Black Pearl wasn't there and was instead Johnny Depp interacting with small parts of the ship. One scene they shot here included a blooper of Johnny Depp hitting the ground pretty hard. Our intentions are strictly honorable. The opening sequence of the film sees Captain Barbosa and Elizabeth Swan visiting Captain Fang's dwelling to ask for assistance. When things go south, our main characters have swords thrown to them through the floorboards. Jeffrey Rush and Kira Knightley had difficulties catching said swords. The actors throwing them had some troubles as well. After a handful of mistakes, they finally got a clean take. <laughs> Did you know that when this movie was made in 2007, it was the most expensive movie ever made, costing $300 million. Even more shocking, 14 years later, it is still one of the most expensive films ever made, only coming in behind Avengers Infinity War, Endgame, Age of Ultron, and fittingly, one of its sequels on Stranger Tides. After everything we've learned though, we understand why it costs so much. So we just call it square then? Another delightfully practical set piece came when the crew rocks the Black Pearl to capsize the ship. The actors filmed the scene on a rotating ship deck. They actually ran against the tipping of the boat, catching and holding onto the railing. For the wide shots of the boat actually flipping over, a 24 foot long miniature was used. I call on Captain T, keeper of the code. Jack Sparrow's character and look was influenced by rock legend Keith Richards, who appears in At World's End as Jack's father. Costume designer Penny Rose wanted his character's costume to be more elaborate and aristocratic than Jack Sparrow's more rough and weathered outfit. They had trouble getting enough materials to make multiples of the costume, but eventually were able to secure the necessary supplies and give the character a unique style. It's not just about living forever, Jackie. Calypso turning into hundreds of crabs is obviously a CGI effect, but would you have guessed that they actually filmed practical elements of this scene for the VFX team to work with? The crew used blue clay balls to fill in for the crabs and dropped three large nets filled with them onto the deck of the Black Pearl. It only took about five seconds for all the balls to drop, but we're sure the cleanup took much longer. Is that it? Bringing Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End to life was no easy task, and we have the utmost respect to everyone that worked on the film. It was truly an amazing achievement in cinema. Which behind the scenes fact surprised you the most? 